mimic them rather than, if you like, becoming them. Uh, and in mimicking them, uh, presumably to try and do them justice as a character, uh, it tends to remain a very surface performance and not a very real one. And it was a very big decision for Meryl and for Sam uh, as to whether they should meet Lindy and Michael Chamberlain. I was really treading on eggs when I met her. I was afraid that I'd these raw feelings that she had, I, that I would be trampling all over them. But when I met her, I realized that this is somebody that's been to hell and back. There's nothing going to bring her down. Nothing. I feel it's good that the movie's been done because it will clear up a lot of points. And in other ways, I wish it had never been done because it's sort of my life on the screen. How can they... Sam Neill plays Lindy's husband, Michael Chamberlain, a Seventh-day Adventist minister whose faith was shaken by their public ordeal. I don't know what God wants anymore. You know? How could he take her? I thought I knew the answer, but I don't. I don't. He had to dig down beyond his vanity and drag out things um, that you've got to bring from within yourself that most of us would like to keep covered up. She was so beautiful. And I wanted something beautiful for you in her memory. I get so angry and frustrated, you know, because I hardly even knew her. I hardly even took any notice of her, you know. Obviously, it's much more difficult to play someone who exists. Not only that, but someone who, who exists in the popular imagination in Australia. Everybody knows what Michael Chamberlain looks like. They know how he speaks, how he walks. You could almost say it was more Michael than Michael in that situation. Is that the truth, really? That your wife told you she saw a dingo coming out of the tent, she thought it had a zaria. Sorry. Azaria, she thought it had Azaria. And you didn't ever ask her why she thought it had Azaria? The tent was empty. She'd seen... I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, could, could you speak up? I... The tent was empty, Mr. Barker. She'd seen the dingo and the baby was gone. Did she ever tell you she didn't see the baby in the dingo's mouth? Uh... You'll have to repeat that question. Did she ever tell you she didn't see the baby in the dingo's mouth? Perhaps Mr. Barker means not what you've heard her say. Did she ever say she, to she you? did? She did. She did. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Did she ever tell you that she did not see the baby in the dingo's mouth? I don't think I can answer that question specifically. Did she ever tell you she saw nothing in the dingo's mouth? She told me the babe... She told me the dingo appeared to have nothing in its mouth. I certainly wanted to make this as true to my perceptions of Michael as I possibly could. Still elements there of feeling quite sick and, you know, all the time trying to say that is not... That is not actually me. That is somebody else. But the problem then was, but it happened to you, Michael. These people suffered a, an incredible tragedy. What people tend to forget is that they lost a 10-week-old baby girl, their daughter. And, in, yeah. and at that time and in that situation, the whole country suddenly turns around and blames you for committing some terrible crime, some, you know, for inflicting this harm on your own daughter. Now, I heard it means sacrifice in the bloody wilderness. Now, that's what, do you, they, what, do you reckon they took the kid up there to sacrifice it? Now, if something was wrong with and him... And their Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah, yeah. people don't like children that aren't normal. <clears throat> in fact, there are only about five reporters who write exactly what you say, and the rest of them use a little bit of license. All Australian saying is that they're a dirty dingo. And that was really quite appropriate to some of the press. It's incredible! There must be crack. Nobody's going to believe that line of ball in ten minutes. 
Let me get this straight. In ten minutes, I'm supposed to have taken the baby back to the tent, put her down, put on my tracksuit pants, right? Then carted her off to the car, uh, cut her throat, cut her head off with the nail scissors, mind you, stuffed her body back in the camera bag. Have you seen the size of that, by the way? And I hurry up and clean up the blood out the car and then picked up a can of baked beans because Aiden, who's been here, presumably, all the time, watching, I suppose, is still hungry. So I take him back to the tent and take off my tracksuit pants and sprinkle blood, my own baby's blood, round the tent and on Regan. And then, oh yes, but when do I make the little dingo tracks round the side of the tent, right around that time, I suppose. And then we have a happy race back to the barbecue as though nothing had happened. Why do you think people wouldn't accept the dingo took the baby? Well, perhaps because this is the first in Australia documented. Michael, Michael, what's accounted for your strength? The Lord Jesus Christ is a very dear friend of ours, our saviour, and the, the peace of God has kept us from being very foolish in our own lives. Ooh. We make decisions about people like this. We don't want to know more. Some have said that we paid people to fake her death. Others have suggested that it was, uh, we had a weird religion and it was human sacrifice. Some others have said that we didn't like or want children and that we weren't allowed children in our religion and that this was an easy way of getting rid of it. Um, some maintain that it's an Aboriginal woman and rabbit's blood been sprinkled around the tent and that we knew about it and staged it. They... Uh, went on television to, I suppose they were unsophisticated. I mean, obviously they were unsophisticated in relation to the media, uh, which meant that if they thought, if they went on television and told the truth, um, everything would go away and rumours would stop. This is a photo of Azaria's clothing, and it shows bad blood stains and a bad tear on the left arm. And it would seem difficult for a dog to get the baby out of there. I mean... Yes, well, if you've ever seen a dingo eat, there's no difficulty at all. Uh, if you've seen them eat the carcass of a cow, something like that, they never eat the skin. They use their feet like hands and they just pull back the skin as they go. They just Oof. peel it like an orange. What we've tried to show is that ordinary people, with all of their frailties, can sometimes get into trouble uh, and be misjudged. And that because of it, the public perception you know, is very, very different from, from the private realities, from, from what's actually happening to them and what they're actually feeling. Don't you understand these views? You're going to sell their lousy papers. People love this rubbish. Will you put us on the front page? We're all over the television. I won't have it, do you hear me? I won't have it. This has got to stop. What they'd already written was much worse. I just tried to correct them and give them the, the facts. Look, will you listen to me? These people have never seen the facts. Hands up all those that think she's guilty. <coughs> Come on. On September 15th, 1988, three judges on Australia's Northern Territory Court of Criminal Appeal, asserting that the couple's earlier convictions had constituted a miscarriage of justice, exonerated the Chamberlains of all charges. To you, Pastor and Mrs. Chamberlain, may I extend my deepest sympathy not only suffered the loss of your beloved child in the most tragic circumstances, but you've all been subjected to months of innuendos, suspicion, and some of the most malicious gossip ever witnessed in this country. What is Joe? Words are totally inadequate to say what we feel and to express our gratitude for your love. A direct comparison of actual news footage 